Hello there, welcome back to the Wind Lily series. Not Wind Lily, Water Lily, but Wind Lily, yes. This is a small hydroelectric turbine. It spins with water, produces power. It works great in water, but it's also suitable for wind. One thing I didn't do in the last video with this Water Lily is power it with a leaf blower. Here we go. Clearly it works. Oddly enough, that blower does not have enough pressure to get this up to full voltage. I have a watt meter hooked up here and it only goes up to 0.14 amps, 9.2 volts, so that's like 1.3 watts. So the problem is that the, the wind has to be flowing really fast to have the power density to get this up to full operating performance. Okay, they sent me some goodies, so let's see what they are. First is this, oh, it's a pole mount. So. This would allow me to mount onto a one inch pole. This is a whole bunch of goodies. I had made an adapter and I forgot that with my adapter, I have to take off the uh, spindle cap here. So I kind of munched that up some. So he included another one. Thank you very much, Adam. Put that on my wall of shame. I also asked for a 12 volt accessory kit. This will allow me to take the output of this turbine and split it or adapt it to other things, connect it to a battery and make it further away. More stickers. And then he also sent me a river float. So now I can attach the water lily to this and throw it in the middle of a river or over bridge or something and it would not sink. This is the, uh, let's see, I'm gonna guess it's the waterproof accessory bag, charging electronics in inclement weather and it has a USB pass through. So on the inside here, you can plug your USB power banks, battery charger cable into this and then feed this in from the turbine and then a strap to carry it all. And, oh, this is a good thing here, some organizing straps. So I had grabbed this out of my zip tie bin before filming this video just to keep it all organized. Of course it's yellow, it matches just like my shirt. And now with these cable ties, I can keep all of this organized when I put it in the bag. I don't know if these will come with any of the kits. These might just be promotional that they threw in for me. Okay, here we get to the wind lily accessory kit. So that turns the water and wind turbine into a dedicated high performance wind turbine. And by high performance, I mean a few watts to charge a few things. So this includes, okay, it does include a cable strap and a portable storage bag and a hubcap here, it unscrews. And then there's some screws in here, which I presume made up to these screw holes here, which made up to these screw holes. Okay, let's put those back in there so we don't lose them. And then these blades. Uh, I am not a plastics expert, but you know, these are pretty durable blades themselves. Assembling these is pretty easy. Stick that in there and then, so get all the blades in and you screw the cap on. feels nice when things just go smoothly like that. Now, this has the tapped holes in it, not the turbine itself. So that goes on there, and then we just back wind this and it locks in right like that. And now we can take our Phillips head stainless, mind you, these are all stainless hardware Phillips head screws, and just drop that in there and Tighten that up. You feel them snugging up a little bit more. Now we have a wind turbine. Plug it into the power meter and make power with it. Okay, let's set it up in the shop and uh, hit it with the blower. And so additionally, we have this mount. One thing that might be nice is to make all of these screws, captive screws somehow. So you take them out, but they still stay attached to the part so you're not out in the field, literally in a field, losing tiny screws in the grass. So I think these are Phillips head one. And got Phillips head one screwdriver. Yeah, there we go. That's better. And three, fit and finish is absolutely perfect. The hole lines up precisely. You know, I don't have to fudge anything. It just 
goes. And these straps are nice for attaching this power adapter module to tripods. For those wondering, I love this thing, XBU03. And here's that little LED strip hooked up just as an indicator that it is actually making power. And I disconnected the other power meter because it's, because it's kind of clunky and I think it's consuming some of the power. It was moving quite a bit. And that's one thing that they say is you do need some sort of weight on it to keep it from tilting over because there's a lot of force on something like this. The anemometer's showing maybe six, six miles an hour, which isn't really enough to work for most turbines. So we got some good solid light coming out of that. If it was nighttime, that would be very bright, but since it's daytime and snowy, that's not appearing terribly bright for the camera. There we go, we're maxing it out, 17 watts. Wow. It's only rated for like 15 watts. We got 17 watts out of it. It's really good. I don't know what the wind gust there was. Here's the raw amps. Fifteen watts. 16 watts. I'm just reading the numbers right off of the watt meter there. 16, 70, 18. You guys see that? 18 watts? <laughs> Man, this thing's working pretty good. As long as there's enough wind, it works really good, actually. Well, as long as it's set up in a sufficiently windy location, it works great. But if you have like mixed wind or low wind, it's probably not gonna do very good. Okay, just, just so you know that, have appropriate expectations for what it's capable of doing in certain sites. All right, and that's not bad for a wind turbine that you can pack in a backpack. Now I do have it just connected right here to this lead acid battery. The engineer I was talking with, he said charging a lead acid or other lithium battery directly is what it's best suited for. It puts out 14 and a half volts. Now a few more comments about this. I have it on my Manfrotto 055 tripod with a cinema head on top, and I'm using that as the swivel. And then I attached a, uh, a piece of plexiglass to the handle. <laughs> so that's a swivel. Now, he told me that they're still working on a, a tail and a swivel assembly to mount on a tripod. They had also sent a pole mount. This goes on a one inch, Schedule 40 pipe, and I had that mounted there, but it's not really, uh, it's not faithful to the intended use of this turbine. It's meant to be portable and temporary, not somewhat permanent, like I had it set up there. And I do have it weighted down with a bucket that's hanging off of this. This tripod has a, a bag hook right there. I should also stress to not touch it like, like that <laughs> because it, it'll hurt you and it's right at head height and that's why it's yellow. I had asked them about doing uh, different color options like camo for preppers and they said for safety reasons they will not sell it as anything other than yellow. 
little change of location here. In the spirit of the application of this turbine, I've decided to switch locations from my house to this hilltop. Ironically, it's more windy at my house at the bottom of the valley, and it's not even windy enough to spin over the anemometer here. At home, it's blowing 15. <laughs> it's a few miles that way down to the bottom of the hill, it's blowing more. Of course, the trees are blowing around up there, so. The season has changed. I've been working on this video for a while. At first, I wasn't impressed with the performance of it. You know, only a couple watts, generally. But a couple watts where there's no sun and no water, but there's plenty of winds, that could be a deal breaker. If you're stuck in the middle of nowhere and need a little bit of power for your phone, this will do it. They've done what they can with the size constraints of the actual turbine itself. It was originally developed for use in ocean current testing. That was the original intention of the turbine. So the blades are an add-on. And it, it doesn't have a whole lot of power output, but that's only this model. And the engineer I've been talking with, he can't tell me more, but they can't really go any smaller. That's what he said. So maybe we'll be seeing something in the future. I hope so. This is not meant to be permanently installed at your house unless you live in a supremely windy location. Uh, it's meant to be portable. So like off-roading, uh, maybe off-grid, but not really. It depends on how mobile the off-grid installation is. In places where there's no sun, like the Arctic in the winter, this would be a prime source of power because it's probably gonna be very windy and there's not going to be a whole lot of flowing water. It'll all be frozen and the sun might be completely gone over the horizon for months at a time. Could also be good on small sailboats just to charge up a small battery, power your marine radio for a few hours a day, charge your cell phones, charge some lights. That's, that's what it's good for. I do recommend if you have a solution like this that you pair it up with something else. Probably not hydro. If you have wind, you're probably not going to have hydro. It's just usually how it goes. You know, you have wind at hilltops and you have water in the bottom of the valley. So <laughs> that's how water is. But you can pair it with solar on your battery charging solution. So this will take care of the in-climate days and solar will take care of the nice days. And if all else fails, they're actually working on a hand crank version of this too. So if it's completely dead and you need a little bit of power now for lights or cell phone, you could crank it up by hand. So you can pair this with different size devices. Um, if you have something big, like a large size solar generator, it might be best to get two or three of these and you can hook them up in series or parallel, it depends on the voltage that you're looking for and you'll be able to overcome some of the charging losses in a, a large device like this. You might better pair this turbine with a smaller solar generator battery pack power station. This is a, an energizer that I've used previously and this charges it decently well. If you have strong enough wind for 15 watts of output, it'll charge this in 16 hours. This is a 240 watt system. This would take 40 hours to charge. Again, that's, that's why I say it's not necessarily the right size for it. It would be able to charge a larger size battery bank like this in about seven to eight hours. That's giving you a scale to the power output that it can do. And at full power, it could charge this in under an hour. Now, don't forget this water really comes in two different versions. You can get a 12 volt version with an SAE connector or a USB version. And you can pick the, the one that's best suited for your application. If you're just powering power banks, I recommend the USB one. You actually get a little bit more current out of it and you'll be able to charge USB devices faster. Some advice that I have for you, try to connect this directly to your device. Don't try to use some sort of monitoring device because the monitoring device will actually consume a significant amount of the power that this outputs because it doesn't output a whole lot of power. I had been testing this on the pole mount for quite a few weeks actually. I ended up draining the battery because I had a power meter similar to this one and it actually consumed more power than this put out on average. My power monitor was consuming about one and a half watts and over the period of my testing period, it drained the battery with that. This just couldn't keep up. You can still use USB with a 12 volt version. You just need to get an adapter like these. These are commonly produced for motorcycles. Another thing you've might have noticed in the videos is this thing is super quiet. Oftentimes the wind noise on my ears will be louder than the noise that this puts off. This produces up to 80 volts of three phase AC, which this rectifies and limits to 14 and a half volts. It does have a brake that comes on at 80 volts of AC output, but they also recommend to not leave this just free spinning if you don't have any load on it. The engineer also mentioned that you can take off blades 
to run it as a three blade or a two blade propeller. I don't see why you couldn't run it as a four blade either. <laughs> so this would be good for higher wind speed applications. The more wind speed you have, you'll wear out the bearings fast and you have a greater potential of actually knocking the whole turbine over. So reducing the amount of blades under really high wind speed conditions is better for the turbine, better for your power output and better for everything around too. And there's a three blade for those who have a hard time imagining things. Another thing I had learned is to not try to transmit 12 volts or even five volts that'd be even worse over long distances because it doesn't work well. It's best suited to have the thing that you're charging right at the turbine. And when it's full, you can disconnect it and swap it out with another one or, or have your devices that need to be charged at the turbine because they offer this handy waterproof bag too. For those that don't know how to do these, you just roll up the top and then you clip it together. So you can plug this bag into the turbine, although this is a USB connection and I have a 12 volt turbine. And then your charging devices can be safe and dry in here. A little bit about the performance you can expect from this. It will start outputting power at about seven miles per hour of wind speed. It'll do 15 watts at 16 miles an hour, and it'll do 23 watts at 22 miles an hour. I guess the final thing to cover is its price, and that's $254.99, free shipping. So, um, maybe plus tax. I'm not sure if you'll have to pay tax where you are. It depends on your local laws and regulations. I should also add that this is made in Canada. And finally, would I buy this? The answer is no but I'm not the customer for this. I don't actually do a whole lot of camping and traveling and outdoorsy type stuff. I just don't have the time. But if you do do those sort of things, then this might be an excellent solution for you. I was breaking down my setup here and I forgot to mention another thing. The bag that it comes in, you can fill with rocks and water bottles or sand and hang it on your tripod so that'll help weigh it down. They do recommend to put it on a tripod that has the legs spread apart and they do offer a tripod for sale along with it too. Here's the view from that park by the way. This is the town I live in. Like, comment, and subscribe and stay tuned for the bloopers. Beep. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Good focus. A little bit of thumbnail shot there. Get my face in it. Act excited. Zip, 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 zip. Negative, Batman.